If you see me preaching with vengeance today, it's because I have a reason for it. I hate the devil. And I'm going to tell you this. If we do not destroy the devil and his works among us, he will destroy us. I am taking a preemptive strike at the forces of Satan and destroy his works. Um, I want to give you a new picture of who you are as a church. Throw up the slide of the first ship. That's the destroyer of the Ali Burke class. One of the most powerful destroyers in the U.S. Navy. But they've got something a little more powerful than that. That is the Zumwalt, the newest destroyer. It doesn't look anything like the one before, but this is the most powerful destroyer in the world. It can sink submarines. It can pull down aircrafts and destroy planes. It can carry up to 93 missiles. It's the most dangerous and deadly uh, destroyer in the world. And that's militarily speaking. I would like to convert that into the spiritual realm. For those of you who don't know, we have a war going on in the spiritual realm. I declare the deeper life will become a zoom out. You are destined to be a destroyer. And we will destroy what the enemy has planned. Thank you for your clips, brother. Good, very good. I read a couple of scriptures in the Old New Testament, but I will explain it in a passage in the New Testament. Hebrews 2, 14, for as much then as the children, you are partakers of flesh and blood. He also himself likewise took part of the same. Watch this. We are going to remember Calvary. And that through death, he might destroy him that hath the power of death, that is the devil. Say destroy. That's the key word that I'm going to be using. Destroy. Jesus came and destroyed him that had the power of death. And we find in 1 John another scripture that helps us to understand 3, 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, understand purpose. This purpose was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So, if Jesus destroyed the works of the devil and destroyed the one who carried it. How come we still have all of this? Because I'll tell you what the word destroy means. Destroy does not mean extinction or annihilation. It does not mean here the destruction of being but the ruin of well-being. Understand that. That the devil is still there, but he's ruined. His works are ruined. He can no longer function as he used to function. He doesn't have the power of death anymore. I heard the Messiah said, I am he who was dead. I am alive. I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and hell. Already we are winners. Hallelujah. Somebody say, yeah. And let me get you to my text. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I have taken this text personally as my own prophetic assignment over the years. I feel the time has come to share this with you. Deuteronomy 33, 
24. I get tempted to preach you right away as I, I, I read, but let me just read it and come back to it. And of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. You just count the many. There are 12 blessings here. I can't go through all, but, but feed your souls. Let Asher be, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. Let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. And thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, that is Israel, who rideth upon the heavens in thy help and in his excellency in the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge. And underneath you are the everlasting arms. And watch this. He shall thrust out the enemy uh, from before you, ahead of you. And you shall say, destroy them. You shall say what? Okay, my topic is destined to destroy. That the church is earmarked as a destroyer. And that we should be destroying a few things. Now some things happen and we blame the devil which he should not be getting the blame for. But there are many things that are happening that the devil is behind it. And we need to put him in his place. We need to destroy him. And there are many truths I'm going to give you that's going to bring me to the climax of the destiny of the destroyer. I am declaring today that DLA, the D stands for destroy. You got to know who you are. This church is going to take a turn, a deliverance turn, a turn of executing the might and the power and the will of God. Hallelujah. So, let's go to the scripture. And Asher, now firstly, the word Asher means happiness. So, when J Jabez was born, his mother was in pain. And she named him Jabez. And he, although... However, he came into the world, he made a request to Jehovah, and Jehovah granted his request. Watch where I'm going. Asher is the eighth son of Jacob through the hand, Leah's handmaid, Zilpah. Now watch this what truth I'm going to give you. It doesn't matter what your pedigree was. How low an estate you have come from. Or what title you carry. If God decided to bless you, nobody can stop it. I don't care if you're a nobody or a somebody. God is going to show in this passage, Asher, I will make you happy. Because some of us have lost our joy. We have lost our happiness. We're not excited like this fellow here, this young man jumping all up and down the aisles. Uh, it's the juice he's been drinking. I won't tell you what kind of juice. Asher has a destiny. And his destiny is to destroy. Do not underestimate a happy man. Because a happy man is a terror to the enemy. Asher was considered second class. Because he was not, the mother was not the first wife. He was a handmaid to Leah. And people may think you and may even refer to you or treat you like second class. But in God's sight, you're always first class, best class, you're in the winner's class. You are nowhere compared to the world. You are my beloved, I have begotten you in Jesus 
Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Tell yourself, I am a first class citizen of heaven. And nobody's going to make me feel second class. We only have one class. And that's a holy class. This train is a holy train. This train. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all what I'm saying here is leading up to the fact that he's empowered to destroy. First blessing, and he said, let Asher be blessed with children. It's a blessing to have children. It's a bigger blessing to have children who are in the ministry. I said, God, why didn't you give us two or three more he said to me when I made Candace I broke them all and there's never going to be another one like she thank you love for for making us feel like we have a million children because you're one in a million hallelujah blessed we are blessed to have children and if you don't have children, you can have spiritual children. Physical is good, but, but some people have physical children, but they have no spiritual children. And so if we really want to calculate the effects of our lives, spiritual children is better in a sense if you don't have physical ones. I get daily testimony of people who who got saved in my crusades when I was 18 to 21 years old. This week, somebody said, Pastor, remember the crusade in Tunapuna 50 years ago? I'm still saved, and I'm serving the Lord. Many spiritual children. I hope you could point to someone in your life and say, This, I have begotten this child for the Lord. And you don't have to have class or pedigree or where you came from. God can use you just the way you are. Amen. The second thing is let him be acceptable to his brethren. Uh, like, like I told the ministers, these are branches I could go off on, but I will not. I just touch it and, and, and let it reach you. Amen. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. Do you know that many people don't accept their own family members? And in the churches, there are some believers who will not accept other believers. Uh, I am ashamed to say it, but I have to mention this. One lady, long time ago, who had nothing and came to church and, Pastor, pray for me. I need a job. Got a job. Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I am doing my bachelor's. Got through. Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Um, I got a job, I got promotion, pastor pray, 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 pastor pray, um, got a master's degree, pastor pray, she became president of the company, pray, 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 until she reached so high. At that door, she said to me one Sunday morning, and I could have fought through, she said, pastor, you know what? This church is too small for me to attend anymore. Because the people in this church is low class. I didn't know where I went wrong. All we do was did was pray. She went up too high. The point is rejection is hard to accept. And I pray. If anybody should ever reject you, know that the one who called you and saved you and washed you will never reject you. He said, you are accepted in the beloved. You need to know who you are and know that Jesus has accepted you. And our motto here is to accept you just the way you are in the hope that you become all you can be in Jesus Christ. You are accepted here. Thirdly, let him dip his foot in oil. 
Oh, what a word. I declare unto you, from today you will not walk in mud. You will walk in oil. You will walk in wealth. And he's going to give you boots. Let him walk. Let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. You will walk in power. And you will walk in wealth. And the next line says, And as thy day shall thy health shall be, you will walk in health. You will walk in wealth. You will walk in health. And you will walk in authority. Come on, let's walk. 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 Hallelujah. Give him glory, people. Let the Lord be exalted. The shoes shall be iron and brass. Trampling a uh, viper will be nothing. Trampling scorpions will be nothing. He said, I led you through the wilderness, to scorpions and adders and vipers. And not one stung them except because of the disobedience. He sent fiery serpents. Do you, would you note that in through the 40 years, nobody got sick in the wilderness. Nobody ever got sick except by judgment. As your days of obedience, so will your health be. God wants you to be healthy. God doesn't want you to glorify him in sickness. Even though we get sick periodically in a little bit, that's okay, it's normal. But God's will is not that you live a sick life. I pray the apostolic prayer that you prosper and that you be in health even as your soul prosper. Come on. Let's toast to the health of the believer. He will give you daily strength for a lifetime. Your destiny is tied to the grace of God. You just spoke, spoke the last thing. That, 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 that sermon did something for me. It changed my life and I think it affected this church positively. And the Lord, all what I just said could be wrapped up in that word, verse. Do not be afraid. For I, the Lord, thy God, I am with you. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I will help you. And the next line is coming up. You will see how God is the one who is going to help you. There is none like the God of Israel who rides upon the heaven in thy help. Listen to me. God is riding high to lift you higher. He is riding in the sky in his glory that you will be lifted up from whatever situation you might find yourself in. There is none. There is none. Save me. There is no God like our God. Mighty to deliver. A healer beyond healer. A comforter in the time of sorrow. Hallelujah. There is none like our God who secondly rides in the heaven to thy help. He is in the heaven to help you. I am saying God is going to help you. Whatever you're going through, he is your helper. Shall I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. I have a mighty God. I have a mighty deliverer. I have a mighty savior. Hallelujah. And he is coming to help you. Oh, help is on the way. Help is on the way. He rides in the heaven in, in thy help. I could go deeper in this. I could preach a whole sermon right there because in Ezekiel talks about the chariot of a wheel within a wheel and the eyes. Those are angels. They're cherubims, seraphims, and 
orphanims. They were the orphanims. They are special angels that carry God. And God said, I am riding high. We could also form the picture of, of the eagle. Because eagles fly high. I did a little research on the albatross. The albatross is the strongest and the biggest of flying birds. An albatross can fly for six months without stopping. It can fly and sleep. The albatross can go around the world twice without resting. 49,000 miles plus. This albatross is a unique sea bird. But let's leave the albatross alone. I, want, I love the image of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the eagle. You see, I feel, and on all my pictures and posting, my icon is an eagle. You go in my office, my little granddaughter said, Papa, where you get all them eagles from? I said, well, somebody gave me one. And when somebody came in the office, they saw it, and they brought another one, and they, other, they thought, I love eagles. And so I have about 14 or 15 eagles in the office. I am an eagle! And I'll tell you what happened to this eagle. After 40 or 50 years, an eagle begins to become weak. The eagle has to go to the highest mountain. And there, in a time of uh, restructuring, his feathers fall off. His beak, he pecks it on a rock until the beak falls off. And within a few weeks, he be, his pinions get stronger. And it begins to grow new feathers. And he gets a new beak. And he decides to fly high. Like the God of Jeshurun. God said, Ye young men shall be, shall faint and they shall be weak. But I say unto you, They that wait upon the Lord, They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Like an eagle, they shall fly and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Some of you are young eagles. I'm an old one, but I'm coming back. I still have to fly high. There's a higher calling upon my life. And you will hear about it soon. But the God of Israel, he rides in the sky to help you and to help me. We are people who will be helped. God will take the high road to lift you off from the low road. Next, the eternal God is thy refuge. I don't know what language to use. To speak and to describe this God that we serve. The word eternal means that never had a beginning and will never have an end. Everlasting means it had a beginning and it will last everlastingly. But eternal has no beginning and no end. He who was and is and is to come is the God. The eternal God is your hiding place. Listen, uh, if, if there was ever a time I wanted to hide, it was yesterday. And I, I went home and I cried for, from 10.30 last night to 12 o'clock like, like I do every night. And I said, God, I only want to hide. I just want to hide. And he assured me, I am your hiding place, son. When you hide in me, you are safe. No enemy can find you, for your life is dead. If ye be then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, for you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in the bosom of God. You talk about security. You talk about hiding. You are safe in Christ. The eternal God is your hiding place. 
and underneath you. Underneath you are his everlasting arms. You want to know why you're still surviving? You want to know why you're still floating and you're still taking a beating and ticking? It's because his arms, his everlasting arms are underneath you, girding you, supporting you, carrying you. I'm reminded of a story of a pastor moving his uh, library from downstairs to upstairs and his little four-year-old decided to help him and picked up I don't know if you know what a concordance looked like long time ago the concordance was the biggest and heaviest book printed in Christendom the single volume big one and the little boy picked up the biggest book and it was weighing him down and he said dad I want to help you and daddy said I know son come let me show you and the daddy didn't take away the load he scooped up the child in his arms and the book was in the child's arm and the daddy took the boy and the book and walked upstairs underneath you are the everlasting arms no matter what load you're carrying god will help you carry it oh give him praise hallelujah Then he says clearly, and I love this part. The eternal God is thy refuge underneath his everlasting arms, and he will trust out the enemy in front of you. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but I guarantee you every day you will face a fight. The enemy is not going to sit down idly and let you prosper. He's not going to sit and fold his arms and walk uh, and say, yeah, yeah, you carry on. He is coming to fight you. It's a war. Child of God, you're in a war. And you, 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 you just have to be ready for tomorrow. But, but this is the encouragement. God said, I'm ahead of you. I am in your tomorrow. And I will chase out the enemy in front of you. He did that for Israel. He sent hornets. Hornets ahead of to chase the enemy out. Your enemy is being chased by God. That is why you will now be able to say what the next line says, which, which I'm going to conclude with. He will trust the enemy from in front of you. I don't know how they knew, the, 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 the prophet said, the enemy will come one way, but God will chase him seven ways. Traditionally, we know four uh, points in the compass. East, west, north, and south. They knew eight long before us. Because there's northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. Those are eight points in the, in the compass. And when he comes one way, God's going to chase him out seven ways. You have no reason to fear the enemy. God is a chaser. And he will chase him out of your tomorrow. Your tomorrow is protected. Your tomorrow is a shield. God will take care of your tomorrow. You just live for him today. Hallelujah. And throw up those scriptures to me, brother. Just one by one and in any order. And I'll just comment. No, the one in the New Testament. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose. Say purpose. Why did Jesus come? The purpose of the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Next scripture. The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Notice his intention and his mission is to destroy. He will destroy your family if you give him chance. He will destroy your friendship and your relationship if you give him chance. Now watch this. And I will rebuke. God said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time thus saith the Lord 
Hebrews 2 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Four things to, 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 to recognize, destroy, and we can walk in the footstep of Jesus Christ and be fellow destroyers. Destroy the works of Satan. Listen, Satan, God did not create disease. I want you to know that. God did not bring disease. Disease is a result of man's disobedience. Satan is a master of disease. He loves to inflict. Everything he did, Jesus undid. Everywhere Jesus went, he was doing good. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. And wherever he went, he was healing the sick. He was casting out devils. He was destroying the works of the devil. And the church has the same option to destroy the works of the devil. Come on church, we need to become destroyers. Begin in your own body and destroy. Destroy that disease in the name of Jesus. Destroy that diabetes. Destroy that blood pressure. Destroy that cancer. Destroy that lung. Whatever that anxiety, that depression, that uh, OCD, that anger, anything in your body that didn't come from the Holy Spirit, destroy it. Destroy his works. You're a destroyer. Malachi said, he will destroy the devourer. Have you noticed when it comes in your left hand, it disappears right in your right hand? You don't get a chance to look at it in your bank account for more than a week. As soon as you pay one bill, the next bill is ready. They, them, them fellas don't make jokes with their bills. Oh, if Christians were prompting churches, how those bills come to my mailbox, I would be very happy. Bills ain't no thrill. But he will rebuke the devourer. That spirit that's eating you out, beginning to eat your joy and your peace and your sleep, eating your muscles and your strength and you can't walk, Jesus in his holy name will destroy, destroy, Destroy the devourer. Because he destroyed him who had the power of death. So he can destroy any and every disease. And Joel 2.25, if you could run that and I done. And I will restore. Say restore. The days. The what? The, the how long? The years. Psalm 90 said, Lord, make us glad according to the days we have been afflicted and according to the years we have seen evil. I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which has sent among you. I will restore. Yeah. Expect your restoration. Beginning today, let us claim to be warriors and destroyers. For I dub deeper life a destroyer of the works of the devil. You were destined to destroy in the power of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Behold, I give unto you power and authority over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means can't harm you. Destined to destroy. Thank God for Calvary. It wasn't for Calvary that ruined him, that took away his business, that made him of none effect to those who would apply the cross. Allow me to say a prayer for you. I feel that I'm going on another level of authority today. Where I'm going to use the name of Jesus to destroy. If there's anything in your life you want destroyed, stand and I'll pray with you. If there's anything in your family, 
in your finances. If you want to dip your foot in oil. <laughs> mm. If you want your feet to be reshod with brass and iron. If you want acceptation from your brethren. If you want to produce spiritual children. If you want the God of Jeshua who rides in the sky to help you. Go ahead and stand. Let me say a prayer. And when I'm finished praying, if you need special prayer, come down here and the ministers will lay hands on you. As long as the music is playing, church is going on, you're free to leave and go outside. But we will be praying for you individually if you need that. And ladies, help pray for the ladies and the men, you know what to do. Father, we we'll thank you. It's with a grateful heart and the clarity of your word. You said... There shall be signs and wonders following your word. I pray that signs and wonders will follow this word. You will, you will energize this word. You will empower this word as people hear it. And faith is built in your word and faith in your name. When the Pharisees asked Peter, by what power had you made this lame man to walk again? Peter said, faith in his name had caused this man to walk again. <laughs> Cause us to put faith in you. Cause us to walk again. Cause us to sing again, to laugh again, to be happy again, to rejoice again, to be wealthy again, to be healthy again. Oh! Lord do it Lord do it because you got the keys you got the power and we are following in your footsteps we have been destined to destroy and today we begin to destroy the works of the enemy one by one we will pull down strongholds we will cast down imaginations for the weapons of our warfare they are mighty to God hallelujah destroy I want you to shout now destroy Shout destroy. There is power in a holy shout. Ask the walls of Jericho. One shout and the walls came tumbling down. There is power in a shout. Ask Gideon. Blow your trumpet Gideon and shout the sword of the Lord and the sword of Gideon. Hallelujah. Shout. Go ahead and shout. Shout destroy. Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name sing and the service you can go